what is going on my lovely actually you know I, rem I just remembered right when I saw this one of you guys requested that I turn the game volume up a bit so I'm gonna bring it up Let's see what that does. The main reason why, I can, well, anyway, it doesn't matter because it's not going to happen right here. As you can see, we're in the replay theater. I downloaded a shit ton of replays. I have about 40 right now that I want to go through and watch. And my criteria, in case you were curious, they have to be around level 30 or higher, meaning they're a certain level of quality. Number two, they kind of have to involve characters that I am personally vested in, whether it's like, so like, you know, you see Tager right there at the very beginning. My versus Arakune, I actually just kind of want to see how this matchup works. I honestly feel like Mai can't do a fucking thing against this character, but we'll see. Uh, Susano and like anything against anything with nine, I'm obviously vested in because I want to learn that matchup. So stuff like that. Characters where either I'm not sure how to approach the matchup and thus I want to see how other people approach it. Or there's a character that I am personally vested in that I want to see. There are other ones. The other, the only other criteria that was involved is if I saw somebody who was a high enough rank that they had a word instead of a number as their rank, which the three I can remember, I think were like leader, hero, and Kishin. I'm not sure if they're, I think it's like, I, whatever. Those three I remember, I'm not sure if there are any beyond that, but if I saw that, I immediately downloaded it regardless of who the characters were. Um, and that was people like, I think this is Poro Picho, or however you say that dude's name. The uh, He's learning Susudo, previously a really good Hakuman player. Uh, I think another one that I saw was, I think it was Grandia, I'm not sure, I, cause there's one, I think it's this like Laura Bodwig thing, I think that's Grandia, I'm not actually sure about that, I'm fairly certain that is a tournament player in Japan of some sort, uh, but I just, I recognize the name from somewhere, but anyway, let's hop into this, let's watch them, and I'm here to learn, and so I wanna try doing this, uh, occasionally, like, I kinda wanna... I don't know if I can say that I'm, I want to do this once a week, but I would like to just go through kind of like once a day and just uh, download any interesting replays that look available and then eventually go through them when I have the time. This would be something that would be really good, like, if I did indeed start to get into streaming and, like, my connection wasn't good enough to handle online play, I could still do something like this uh, on a stream. So I'm kind of trying to pay attention to things like that, man. This poor Tager is just getting lychee. But I think the Tager player is the one who uploaded it, so I'm pretty sure they probably get like a lucky run back or something. Or it's just he gets lychee for 30 seconds and then he Tagers her for 5 and wins. He got to backdash! Yeah, that's one thing you definitely have to learn in order to properly uh, handle your pressure. In order to properly overdrive raid, you never obviously would never want to do that off of a jump cancel than normal. But it's players like this light sheet. That would ultimately, uh... They fucked up by allowing themselves to get into danger, though. And not teching there? Yo, he should've rapid canceled that. When she's in danger mode, he should've rapid canceled that and taken all the damage he could possibly get. There you go. Okay. Oh, he was near the corner! He's smarter than me! That light, she isn't smart, though. Not teching right there. Eating all that extra damage. Woo! He should not have lost. That match should have gone in a very different direction. Like, cause negative with negative penalty, it's so easy to manipulate to ensure you never get it. All you have to like, you gotta walk forward a little. That was a fantastic call out, and it didn't work. Goddamn. Um, you have to like walk forward for like two steps to negate six back dashes. Actually, I'm pretty sure just holding backward is actually more impactful than mashing on back dash. For negative warning. That was bad. This, this guy just kind of does overdrive raid like for shits and giggles, and it just really never works for him. That should not have worked. Oh, 
Oh man, he just keeps doing it! See, I need to find a nice middle ground between myself where I'm just like, I don't think this is gonna work right here, so I'm just never going to do it. Versus this guy's like, fuck it, I got my burst back, let's overdrive raid. <laughs> I need to find that middle ground in between those two extremes. I'm so glad Lychee is an uncommon character. I really, she is definitely near the top of the list for like my most disliked character character to play against. I am not fond of her. Damage! 5k! Oh! Oh! Only he had a rapid case. Oh! 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 oh, please stop! Please stop! Oh, shit! That was beautiful! God, that's the thing that I hate! That's the thing that I hate! You cannot play back this replay, then why is it available to download? Alright, Porto Picho. Show me what you've learned, homie, because the last time I saw your Susano, I was distinctly unimpressed. The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel one. Action. Go, Cassia. <laughs> that poor bastard. He just wants to get in once against nine and he just gets cock blocked immediately. <laughs> Oh boy. There you go. There you go. That's what I need to be doing. I can't a better combo. Gets you, uh. Oh my god. This poor guy. He just wants to run mix up and the 9 just keeps hitting buttons and Susano's mix up isn't good enough to handle that shit. But yeah, I feel like with Overdrive, you always want to get, like, if you're going to use Overdrive in a combo, you want to get, like, three unlocks minimum. Four or five if you're, like, depending on the actual, like, what the fuck is, what the fuck is... Nah, that doesn't do enough damage. There's no way that does enough damage. I mean, he does have a lot of shit unlocked against him. Close. Okay, that actually did get a lot closer than I thought. That beam did more. That dude got called out! Mario! It's like off of that right there, if he had overdrive right there, if like if that was I was in that situation I had overdrive, I would have gotten you can get level 3 236A, uh DP and 236D off of that. So that's four unlocks right there. I just wish that wasn't quite so bad. 236A, I wish it was... It's negative 3 on block, consistently. It's always negative 3 on block. Oh, I never actually noticed her hat came off during that. See, I'm learning matchup stuff. Her hat comes off in certain animations. <laughs> learning! Useful information that's gonna help me out a lot when playing in this matchup. I need to figure out exactly which, uh, she just did it right there and I need to pay closer attention. But this is the kind of thing where it's kind of like, you almost want to learn 9, so that you always know, like, when she has what her, uh, unlock shit, like, dependent on her, um... Trying to talk and like pay attention at the same time because poor people's actually doing really well right now. And like especially against nine, like this is a character that I'm just sitting here like, man, this matchup's gotta fucking suck. He's doing it. He's handling business. But yeah, so like when because whenever nine uses a move, it gives her that little bar. And so it's kind of almost Dormammu ish that a lot of people compare her to. Um, and so she maxes out at three, and depending on the combination of those three, she gets a certain move when she does... I think it's when you do a command. I don't think it's when you just use D, but I'm not 100% sure on that. 
Um, I'm actually going to keep that one. But actually knowing, like, okay, she has these three things. This is exactly what she's going to get from those three things. And so, you know, like, I know exactly when the rock is available to be able to look out for that because it is such a good move. So I know when, you know, like anything with mix-up potential, she has that available. So I know what kind of mix-up to watch out for, that kind of thing. And it almost, it does feel like you would want to play nine just so you have that knowledge in the back of your head. Otherwise, you just got to stare at a chart and memorize it like you're cramming for finals or some shit. That's not very fun. I always hate seeing somebody do like so much work and then you, it, they got like less than 2k for it. It's like I think that was a crouching specific hit confirm and everything too. <laughs> Is that safe when it's leveled up? I see so many people using it. I've failed to uh, punish it as well, and so like I'm, because I know it's unsafe when it isn't leveled up. But I need to learn that shit. Cause if it is, that's a wonderful tool to have at your disposal. He also really seems to prioritize getting the DP on the And honestly, I don't think I've ever seen him miss it, either. Like, every time he throws it out, he gets- Oh my god! Oh, Picho, please! Holy shit! Yeah, he got good! He got good! I need to pay- Like, is there a way to, uh... Actually, I actually, like, favorite this shit or something? Does that even- it doesn't fucking matter, who cares? Um... If there was a way to, like- Oh, that shows who won follow a player so you know like oh this person just uploaded a new uh replay and then you can go you know like get that immediately i just wanted to see this because i'm seeing a high ranking bullet and i can't believe anybody upa still uses bullet in central fiction he's the only one i see everybody else is gone i don't see any more bullets so i was just i saw a bullet and i was like shit i want to check this out same thing with uh because i went through the replay list really quickly Oh, that fucking sucks. I went through the replay list really quickly uh, before I started recording this and got a few more. Oh, shit! But I, uh... The first time I went through it, I was watching, I was just kind of starting to notice, like, there are certain characters that I have not seen a single one of, so I started paying attention and looking for them. Bullet was one and Talkaka was another. I only saw one Talkaka. Which I feel like she's just... I don't know. I feel like she's just perennially, perennially slept on. I fucked that up when I tried to just transition immediately into slept. But like, nobody thought she was a particularly good character originally. When she was like, the best. And then Sushikawa won Arc Revolution with her. And everyone was like, oh my god, Togaka's the best! And then immediately afterward, nobody really bothered learning her. And everybody just kind of forgot about her. And... Everybody's just kind of like, oh yeah, she's whatever. I just feel like if it's just one great person picked her up, they fuck everybody with her all over again. Just nobody does. That is punishable. That sucks. Her 5D is one of the single most useless moves in the game now. Like, cool, they raised the uh, range of it by a significant amount. But now it's punishable on block, regardless of your heat level. So yeah, that was that was kind of sad, because they just got fucked up. <laughs> I, was, I got that solely so I could look at Bullet, and you basically just got to see Bullet get her ass kicked. Um, but yeah, like, you have the range, but the startup is significantly decreased, so like the range doesn't even matter anymore. It's like if you would, if you sat there in the old games and held 5D and expanded the range out, you get about the same range by the end of, by the time they each of them start up, regardless of which game you're playing, because of how 
altered the startup is in this game. And then you have, um... The fact that it can't be comboed into anymore, which is fantastic, that's awesome. So do I, need, I I guess I just need to start chicken blocking that. Because every time I see it successfully punished, the person chicken blocks. If only they had tech, they would have saved themselves like 2k damage. It always sucks to see that. 2k damage in the corner without the doll. Okay, now they got the doll back. And now they probably just won. Just so welcome to car, motherfucker. <laughs> they used the overdrive raid to get out once. They don't have that anymore. They do have a rapid cancel super, though. Is the car- oh, okay. I was gonna say, like, is the car not even gonna let him live? Carl would have been dead if you confirmed that roll catch. Oh, that sucks. Question for you, my players. I know that. What the hell even hit him? I don't even know what hit him. I know when you fully charge the spear throw, it becomes unblockable. Does the follow up also become unblockable, or is that just like a normal hit? And by follow-up, I mean, like, when it changes trajectory because you didn't throw it directly at them. That is something I would like to know about that move. He just gone low. He never went low. But there is the low. We were blocking high the entire time. This dude's about to get fucking unblockable. Holy shit. Carl! It sucks too that you can see it coming from like a mile away. There's just there's nothing you can fucking do about it. If you have burst, you can do that. Cool. If you don't, you're fucked. Oh my god, Carl! The very definition of a momentum-based character. Holy god. That character is frightening. Because it's stuff like this, like, you know, when I download a replay like that. Obviously, I'm not interested in learning Carl. I've learned my lesson on that front. I'm, unless my DLC goes on sale at some point, I'm never buying that DLC. So I'm not interested in learning either character. But I want to see how Mai would deal with an offense like Carl's. That, you ever want to see somebody not respect somebody? Throwing out Rekkas at round start? That dude don't give a fuck! Oh my god. This poor guy is getting mollywopped. Like, these are the worst kind. Oh, don't! Never roll in the corner. Never, ever, unless... I mean, I shouldn't say never, but... If the person's like right up in your shit, that requires a pretty specific- Oh my god, never mind, that's a real lack of res- Let me just pause that. Round. Start. Hornet. This dude doesn't give a shit. Zero respect for this dude's gameplay right there. That just screams. I'm not scared of you. I'm gonna fucking destroy you regardless of whether or not you punish this move. But see, like that, like if you get away, you can get away with rolling if the person's directly on your ass. But if they're backed up like that, you're never gonna get away with the roll. It's too easy to punish. Oh no, it actually worked. No, God, make it stop. Oh no. No, okay, good, that didn't work at least. No, <laughs> help me. Oh, God, that hurts to watch. That hurts to watch. Let's, let's remove the evidence. Damn! The wheel of fate is turning. Rebel one. Action! I'm telling you, so I forgot to mention it. That's a good hit confirm, though. I'm not sure if... I want to stick with Susano. Like, I feel like I would rather play a different, like, learn another character. Um, because there's, like, two th two very distinct things. Like, I don't think it's, um, you know, like, oh, man, I'm never going to win with Susano. I'm never going to get good with Susano. Completely not that. 
there's just two specific things that if they changed, I would go running to him so quickly that it would belie my rather large state of being. Everybody would just be like, that motherfucker can move that fast? Holy shit, that's how fast I would go to Susano. It would blow people's minds. If they got rid of that bullshit dash startup, his dash isn't that good. It's damn good. But it's not good enough to require a 15 second startup animation. It's bullshit. If his 2A was a low, those two things, I would go running back to Susano. But the simple fact of the matter that his only lows are a special move, 236B, 3C, or 2D, that's it? Eh. I feel like that's almost everybody's aim when using Susano. It's just you have the players that either really, really fucking like 214A, or not 214A, 214B, uh, the little flippy ground smash thing, or they want 236B. It's like one of those two. Nobody gives a shit about everything else. It's like everything else is just casual. Like, oh yeah, I got that, sure, I'll use it. But I feel like people base their offenses around either unlocking 214B or 236B. Damn, you just got caught. So I honestly feel like that sucks. It took the burst. That just sucks. He did it again. <laughs> I feel. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but would Kagura be the best character in the game if played by a computer? Because I feel like with all of his armor shit, with all of his like button reading shit, he has too much potential. It's just impossible to actually reach that potential because you have to be like so frame perfect on your reads and stuff like that and your inputs and everything. I mean, I could be completely wrong. It just it feels like with all of the armor stuff and the cross up, not cross up, overheads, it just feels like if you put that in the hands of somebody who cannot, who literally cannot fuck up, that he would be a monster. By the 2A. I think this was another one. I haven't really seen Relius ever. And so I just downloaded this one. I am also interested in learning S. I mean, not like learning to play, but actually knowing her capabilities and shit. Because out of all the, like, newer characters, Nine is the one I play the most easy. But then after that, it kind of just dies off, and I'd say, like, my and S have been pretty much equal. Almost nobody plays Naoto, that poor bastard. And I've seen very, very few Habikis, which actually surprises me, because he seems like the kind of character that a lot of people would pick up. Very easy to use. Nominally strong, like he's not overpowered or anything, but he's very. He's still a good character. This S gotta work on their setups though, the timing. Because they were actually confirming those instant overheads. Or not really, it's not really a confirm, you just gotta time it correctly so the instant overhead hits and then it combos into the little. whatever trap thing that she sets, activates. You just have to time that correctly, that's all there is to do, it's not even really a confirm. See, like, that pressure right there, that's what I want to fucking figure, it's that shit where I'm just sitting there the entire time, like, is this really just, is this true? Is this real? Do I gotta sit here and hold this and look at the rally, is it? There have been some one-sided ass beatings so far in these. The 
wheel of fate is turning. Rebel one. Action. I wish I was a Japanese player with persistent full bar connections that I can just skip the intro every time because who cares? The connections are fantastic anyway. <laughs> Be nice. Damn! Oh. Okay, I was gonna say, like, that was not a good enough starter to be able to do all that shit off of. So that looks like that's some, uh. It's like Ragna. Actually, he probably technically. Backdash with the correct time. I just hit a button that I didn't mean to hit. Um, because originally I kind of saw that. I was like, oh, that's probably like Ragnar's Infernal Divider, which has so many active frames. You got a late backdash in order to actually properly backdash it. But I'll bet he did properly backdash it. It's just that unfortunately, because of the, uh, you get better invincibility off of the dash first version, so they just really didn't account for the dash in there. And that gave it just enough active frames to, uh, land. Let's so B. So B. I feel like B is the better version if you're gonna try to run, uh, mix up off of Gadget Finger. Holy shit, that dude is mashing the... This dude's input... I actually wasn't paying attention. I'm gonna pay attention. I'm not gonna pay attention to the game. I'm gonna watch this dude's inputs. They were going fucking bonkers. Like, he did an entire 360A, I felt, during that entire thing. This dude hits mad directions. Like, he did an entire half circle. Instead of a quarter circle. Damn! Alright, I'm done watching the inputs. This tag is going nuts. That was a free atomic collider. Oh, you're dead! Oh, okay, that actually worked. I saw him walk forward a little bit before the 6C came out. I was like, oh, you done fucked up. He's gonna get the tech. But it worked. I guess that's a fairly lenient combo. Oh, is this the same one? It's the same Tager. I wasn't paying attention to the, uh... Now toes. Or what if it's, is this the same replay? <laughs> what if they both uploaded the same exact replay? No, because the tagger was a. Uh... The tagger was on the first player side. But yeah, this dude's doing what I talked about in the last video the real gadget finger with combos. Um, you can do that on that? I didn't know that. You get three of those? I would have I would have guessed two. Um, when I was talking about the quote unquote real gadget finger with combos, it's doing that you do 2A, 5B straight into 2C. I was like, you should have saved that burst. You're you're down too far. And you're fighting against Tager. But yeah, you do that into uh gadget finger with and then you can 5B, 5C, 6A, 2C, and then Atomic Collider off of that. So it's an extended combo, you get more damage, etc, etc. All that good stuff. But right now, I just... I don't do that. Oh, what was that button on Wake Up? That was 6B, right? Did you ever do that? Just a cool 4600 damage for throwing that out on Wake Up. Worth? Oh, no. That's gonna armor. Oh! It almost did. Woo! Every Naoto I've ever seen loves to do that. The dash DP, like on other people's wake up and shit like that. Because it's. I think it might be the best DP in the game. The dash version. Not the. Uh, not his regular DP. 
But the dash version of his... That just did 4K?! The dash version of his BP hasn't... I've never seen it get beat by anyone. Taker, why does it keep... He just keeps mashing into those. Shouldn't have used that. Probably shouldn't have used that. Super. I'll bet you that. Yep. Oh! No! Okay, never mind. He's gonna DP his way to victory. But that's almost, that's kind of why you never really want to utilize, um, oh damn, it's the same dude again. We're going to take a break from that dude. We're going to move on to somebody else. Um, that's why you almost never really want to use meter unless you know it's going to kill at the end of a combo. Because, like, rapid cancel mix-up or reversal into rapid cancel, that kind of stuff. is It's too good to throw away meter for something that's just a little bit of extra damage that isn't going to kill. Eh. Never let Azrael do that. Oh, is he doing the real? Nope. That's not a bad combo, but I was hoping for the real shit. That is a massive radius! What determines how big? Does it grow over time or something? I never thought it was that big before! Started off so strong that Asriel did. Then he just got fucked up the second he got touched. Oh, that's <laughs> that actually wasn't that bad. That's dirty. He should have thrown out Growler. He shouldn't have rolled. This Azrael, it isn't even like... I mean, he's just doing everything wrong. Like, why would you throw a button out from that distance away? Yeah, that didn't have anything to do with, like... There's nothing you can take from that. It's just that player did literally everything. In every situation, they made the wrong choice and paid for it. Let's see, oh god, it's the exact, exact same start. I almost never really find Like, Grandi is kind of the closest that I've ever seen, but even he can be a bit too patient at times. I just, I feel like, oh, that sucks. He's actually going to die for that, isn't he? Whenever I see a Tager player, they always fall into one of two camps. They're too patient, and they allow people to get away with too much because of it. Or they're too reckless, and Tager's just not a good enough character to be able to be, like, massively reckless with him. Granted, he's just... It's, plus, I mean, it's kind of like... He's not really solid enough to play without being at one of the extremes either, though. Oh, oh, oh that sucks. That's the big, that's the big thing with Azrael, like, once a Tager has meter, you pretty much kind of want to start going nuts on jump cancels. Because everything he has has too many gaps in it for free 720s. Oh damn, it's already been 35 minutes, alright, this is going to be the last one for now, I'm, I'm going to be able to get like, 7 videos out of all these replays, dude! Do this more often? You can watch actually good players play instead of me. Ha <laughs> That was bullshit! I hate air throws in this game. The, just, the hitboxes make no fucking sense on them. It's like, if you're completely level, half the time you won't even grab them. 
but if you are underneath somebody and they're like an entire character sprite above you, you're gonna get grabbed. That's horse shit. Oh, they threw out something punishable against Izanami. Rest in peace. Never mind, Izanami fucked up. Oh, Izanami got the armor. You're fucked. You don't get to play no more. Some of the things they gave to these characters just legitimately baffles me. Persistent armor that can take up to, like, what, three hits or something like that? I don't know. But just persistent armor in general. That's a, not, that's a good way to get it. Nine's frame data in general. It's actually kind of funny. The one thing that most people, I see most people complain about with Izanami is that time pretty super of hers. That's, like, the one thing that I don't really care about. I mean, number one, they just ripped it straight off of Carmine from O'Neal. But, uh... I can see it kind of being an annoyance because, like, you're just stuck there. And it can be a fairly decently long combo that you just gotta hold that. I can kind of understand maybe that criticism, but, like, I see people calling it overpowered and shit. And it actually massively... As far as I'm aware, it usually prorates a combo, and you don't really get that much damage when you use it. This is my big problem with Habiki, is like, he's solid, but he is the definition of a basic bitch. There's just nothing really interesting about him. Because everything he does is good. And that's it. He doesn't have any spectacular bullshit. He doesn't have anything that's like super weak. And I feel like that kind of makes a character boring. It's the Jin syndrome, except Jin's just better. <laughs> Surprised is Izanami's gotten this high of a level without like really learning real combos. Like they just they seem to miss almost all of their firms like that. That's a bummer. You got that half second to think like, yeah, I'm catching them in the startup or something. I'm going to blow them up. And then you get boot to the face. I'll hail the mistress.